Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss about the development of the seeds and fruits. So in flowering plants, when you start to see fruits, you no longer see the flowers. So this is what happened after fertilization. Okay, where you don't no longer see the flowers. Why? Because the petals will fall off. Okay, the stigma and the style will wither away and we say the couple begins to swell. It's like the plants now in a state of pregnancy. Okay, so this photographs over here is showing the development of the tomato seeds and fruits after fertilization. So stigma style will degenerate. Sepals can still be seen. Okay, the ovary wall swells. Okay, so after double fertilization, remember why it is why is it double two? Because we have two male gametes. Upon entering into the embryo sac, one of it will uh, fertilize the egg cell, okay, which is in between the two synergid cells, and that is to form zygote. So here, zygote will divide by mitosis. It is going to undergo this process forming two cells. Okay, remember if it is mitosis, this is the outcome that you will end up having two daughter cells. So two cells here, one will be larger than the other. So we have here the terminal cell after zygote undergo mitosis, and another one is the basal cell. So let's look at it. The larger cell is going to develop into a suspensor. Okay, so this is the suspensor. Okay, this is the suspensor from a larger cells. Basal, basal cells. Okay, and this suspensor serves to anchor okay, the embryo to the wall of the embryo sac. So it's like the placenta in human beings. So you see here from the basal cells, it will become the suspensor, okay, which is here, serves to anchor this embryo. This whole thing here is the embryo to anchor it securely to the wall of the embryo sac. So what happened to the, the other cell, which is smaller, that is the terminal cell, you see, as it develops, okay, so as it develops, you get to see it becomes this thing. Okay, what is this thing? This is the embryo. So embryo consists of the plumule, of the radical, and the cotyledon. Okay, cotyledon, the food supply. So here has got two, so that means this is a two or Die cotyledon. So uh, there is this, um, okay, P, okay, the structure of the embryo, we have the P and the R. So to make it easier for you to remember, P for P, plumule will eventually develop to become the shoot that is pucho, and then R radical is going to develop eventually to become the root. So R for R. Now, what about this endosperm? Okay, this endosperm comes from the other male gamete. Remember just now, we have two male gametes. That's double fertilization. Okay, so the other male gamete is going to the middle here at the embryo sac, and it is going to fuse with the other two um, polar nuclei, and that's why two plus one, that's how you get triploid endosperm nucleus which will also undergo mitosis, forming the endosperm tissue, which is this. So endosperm tissue is a food storing tissue, which surrounds and also supply nutrients to the embryo. So the embryo here is well nourished because of the presence of this endosperm and also cotyledon. Okay, so this is the development of a seed. We have here the bean seed, to represent the dicotyledonous plant, two, cotyledon, one and two. Okay, and we have the corn seed 
as the monocot plant. That means one cotyledon. That's this. All right. Also, we have the embryo. Remember, just now we have the embryo consists of the radical. Okay, radical, the bottom part here, which will develop to become the root. And we have the plumule, which eventually is going to develop to become the puchuk or the shoot. Okay, so this is the endosperm. Okay, we have the endosperm, which is in the monocot plants. Okay, the cotyledon, the endosperm, when we eat those corn, sweet corns, we are actually eating the endosperm which is the food storing tissue. Okay, next is the fate of this structure of the flower. So this is the ovary. Ovary will develop to become the fruit. Okay, so ovary become the fruit. Okay, what's in the ovary? We have the ovule. So what happened to the ovule? It is going to become seeds in the fruits. Okay, I still remember this intergumen structure which is the two layers of the developing uh, nacellus tissues okay intergumen okay remember our integumentary system okay that's our skin so here for plants this will form the seed coat okay this will form the seed coat which serves to this is the keyword to protect the embryo which is within it okay so what happened to other flower parts the stigma the style is going to degenerate there will be a scar on the ovary wall uh, this is it there will be scar here at the wall of the ovary now let's look at the wall the wall becomes the pericarp the wall the wall of the ovary refers to to the wall of the fruit. So peri means around or about. Okay, so this pericarp consists of axor, which means outer. Okay, we have also mesocarp. Meso, which means M for M. That's the middle. Okay, middle of the fruits. And then we have this endo, and endo means inner, so the inner structure of the fruits. So this cup refers to fruits, exocarp, mesocarp, endocarps. This are the one uh, that we uh, that builds up the pericarp of the fruit. Okay, so seeds cannot be eaten, and it comes from the ovule. Okay, and we have the peduncle, tangkai bagi bunga, which will become tangkai for this uh, apple fruit. Okay, so this activity is to observe the structure of a fruit to relate it to the structure of the flower. So, in other words, we want to trace back okay, the fruits. What is the structure that forms the fruits? That's the ovary. And, and then how about the seed? It comes from the ovule. Okay, how about the parts of the fruit which can be eaten? Between, if it is between these two, okay, fruits is the one that can be eaten. That's the ovary. And seed is the one that we don't eat, okay, which comes from the ovule. Okay, and the ovary, if we trace back, we have this... Uh, uh, the the misocarp, okay, the fleshy parts of the fruits. Now this activity is to collect specimens to study the types of fruits. Okay, so we have here the types of fruits, four types, namely simple fruit, aggregate fruit with their respective examples, multiple fruits. And another one is the accessory fruits. So how uh, how are they different from one another? So for simple fruit, it develops from a single couple. So as depicted here, this is the couple, single couple, or it can be several couple. 
fused together and the keyword is single flower so from a single flower so examples these are the examples peas okay also lemon peanut okay these are examples of simple fruit okay so this is the stigma forming the scar okay aggregate fruit comes from numerous couples so you can see here there are more than one couples in a single flower okay still it is in a single flower okay but for multiple fruit it is from cluster of flowers okay so we have examples just now numerous couples in a single flower the, the examples are the berries so we have here the raspberry blackberry strawberry they are in this category but for multiple fruit they are from cluster of flowers or we call it as the inflorescence cluster of flowers okay so like this cluster of flowers okay many many flowers for these first two just now in a single flower so each segment develops from the couple of one flower examples okay multiple fruit okay for accessory fruits they these fruits they develop from tissue that is not in the ovary but that they are from some tissues which is near the couple or the female reproductive parts and the typical example given is apple okay and also the, the pear right here so this is the ovary and the accessory tissues okay so we have here terms of uh, receptacle so what's receptacle it's the part of the flower stalk where the parts of the flowers are attached so that means it's like the the pangkal eh? we say daripada hujung this tip over here okay comes all the, the, the petals of the flowers so the ovaries is somewhat embedded okay embedded in the fleshy uh, receptacle so that's why they categorize it under accessory fruit saying that not directly in the ovary but from nearby tissues okay so these are the examples of the fruits okay examples and that's it for today's lesson